Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to the ASL Challenger. We are in match number two. This is game number one, and I am Tempo, joined by the wonderful Fear Dragon 64. <laughs> the straight up Fear Dragon. Necessary. <laughs> We do have our uh, second game. It is going to or our second match. It is going to be a ZVZ between this player in the top, representing Sidestorm Gaming. Give it up for Warren and his opponent spawned down here in the bottom left-hand side of the map. We have the Red Zerg player. Give it up, none other than Gamja. I don't know why he renamed himself Kudo. He's been playing with uh, the name Kudo in the. ASL Bacon Weeklies as well, so I don't know if it's like only his NA name or if he's made some kind of name change or something, but I don't know. Maybe it's the season four. It's Scarlet, Tashira, Gamja, it's Kudo. Yeah, a lot of people have just been playing around with those names. Uh, Scarlet going with Shura is an interesting one also because she has really committed to it with the, even like the Twitter name change and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Gamja, I, as far as I'm aware, he's only Kudo on, in the game, right? I think so, it's still yeah. Gamja on Twitter. Man, whatever so. whatever they have on Twitter is what I usually <laughs> go by. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is going to be a really early gas here out of uh, Kudo or Gamja. And uh, Warren looking to do something else, though. I think he went for the hatch first, but then he went for the pool before the gas. Mm -hmm. So, a minor, minor difference, but it allows you to get out the lings a little bit earlier. Try to defend against those uh, early aggression. Because, I mean, ZVZ nowadays, it, the early aggression is real, man. It yeah, is real. It, it seemed like for a while, hey, things are kind of going to like the, it's like the roach versus roach, but there's ravagers mixed in. But then we just, I feel like the more ZVZ that I ended up seeing played over time, the more it would just revert back to Ling, uh, Bandling Micro and like aggression. Yep. Yeah, people are saying that it's because of the maps and whatnot, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It's definitely in the air and people on the ladder are kind of going crazy with it at all, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, first couple of Zergans gonna be coming out and scouting out the very fast third coming out from Ku uh, Gamja over here. Uh, well, wait a second. Did they actually get vision of the third? Okay, yes, oh. they did get vision of the third alongside the Overlord. And he's gonna get right. a decent scout on everything. Yep. Warren knows what's up, and uh, what is his response gonna be? It looks like he wants to take a third himself. Mm -hmm. so he's gonna jump on that, and wow, we're gonna have a pretty passive early game here. Dusk Towers kind of yeah is the map to do that on, although some people still go for it anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I. You know, the more that I look at it, the more that I like the fact that uh, Gamja didn't even bother to send out his initial two Zerglings or do any sort of fast Zergling scout. Because now I look at it and I say, well, what did what did uh, Warren really scout out with those two Zerglings? I mean, that he didn't see with the Overlord. Mm -hmm. um, he ends up seeing where the uh, the hatcheries are taken and which hatcheries are taken. He ends up seeing the like timing for the Gas Geyser and Zergling speed and everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. like I mean, just only the one gazer, difference. yeah, that's pretty much it, mm -hmm. but the things that you're usually going to be looking for, say like an earlier Roach Warren, some people like to do mm -hmm. some really, really fast Roach play, um, seeing if it was a gasless build too, like on a map like this, I've seen some players like to go for that, mm -hmm. um, it's not quite as common, but people are trying to bring it back a bit, just because they feel like they can defend their in, in base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, big uh, bailing hit over there for Warren. Kills off a decent chunk of those Zergs. I think at least getting six or eight of them or somewhere around Damn, there. Damn, okay. Now going to be able to continue a bit of aggression. Gamja does have quite a few bailings still left over. Four of them sitting around waiting defensively. And I don't know if Warren's going to be able to accomplish a whole lot over here, nor do I think he's trying to. He's just droning up behind all of this. Yep, he's droning up pretty hard. Getting carapace, though. So maybe he is going to go into a big attack. I don't really know how much it's going to help him, though, with the uh, roaches coming out from Gamja. Gamja's looking a little bit more standard, you know, getting the lair now, uh, getting the plus mm -hmm. one, and then he's going to go into a more roach-based attack or roach-based army composition. But the w the fact that Warren is going for Carapace first, I'm, I'm a little bit intrigued because uh, he hasn't put down any other attack yet. 
But he's mining off of four gas. Or will mm -hmm. be soon. Yeah. There he goes. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, where is uh, all this gas going to end up going? Um, I I feel like I've seen some players try and do the mutilus play, but it, I don't know. Maybe uh, it's just me, but I, I it's been much less likely that I've seen mm -hmm. that mutilus play. And I, I don't fully understand why. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've seen it like, like uh, stylistically. Some people really like mm -hmm. it. And they'll swear by it and go into like lurkers too, you know, really mm -hmm. fast mutas into fast lurkers where you just try to get them out. But mm -hmm. I don't know. People haven't really been experimenting as much with it. Going back to the kind of tried and true roaches, Ravagers always do well, no matter what, uh, for the most part in this matchup. But you just have to make sure not to like overcommit to them either. So, oh, wow, though. Look, look. Ooh, you do have the spire. Your voice is my command, uh, says Warren. <laughs> Warren's like, well, let me show you how it looks like when we go Spire. Now, I'm hoping that he'll be able to show us a, a positive result over here and not show me why you don't go for Spire. Yeah, we'll find out, though. He's doing it in a different way, though, because he took the early third. Um, the timing for the Mutas to really get stuff done has kind of passed. Mm -hmm. And unless he's going to use them for, like, to totally blindside Gamja then I don't know. I don't really get it either. Because he's investing into the plus one upgrade for the roaches. Mm -hmm. And if you go in a straight up roach v roach Ooh. on the same kind of economies... Oh, was there a... Uh, just a couple of Zerglings trying to do some harassment. Uh, <laughs> losing their lives to a Baneling. <laughs> yep. But if you go in like roach v roach, uh, straight up, you know, the kind of economy versus economy, you drop that Spire, that's 200 gas that's not going to go into another upgrade. Or more roaches, pretty much. So, mm -hmm. you have Absolutely. to be very careful. Yeah, got to be careful where you spend all those uh, resources just because even the small differences will make an enormous, like, it seemingly small difference in numbers can make a huge difference when it comes to the actual engagement. Oh, God. Uh, but s speaking of differences, we do have a, f a good 20 ish supply lead in army supply for Gamja right now. But Sunga's yep. army is going to be lacking a bit further behind, so maybe an opportunity for Warren to do something. But uh, losing this fourth expansion this early on, when it's trying to be made, going to be a bit rough. Oh yeah, but the thing is, he was making mutas here, and mm -hmm. you know the timing for them to do their thing is kind of past, like I said. And there's not that many of them. And if he's not going to commit fully to them, he's just going to use them to at least push him back. Mm -hmm. So that's actually really good for Warren, the fact that he was able to get enough roaches to defend. But he did lose the fourth. Gamja does have the fourth, and he realizes that if he takes the engagement, then he is going to eventually get cleaned up. Although sometimes mm -hmm. you will see the roaches push on in, so I guess he just yeah. felt like he was just going to go home. Um, I love how many Ravagers he's getting the opportunity to pick off, though, on this retreat for Gamja. He's picked off at least five or six of them, and mm -hmm. he's maybe getting a little bit overcommitted over here on the other side of the map, but with the Mutalus also taking out those Ravagers, he continues to focus fire those down then. Uh, maybe he doesn't need the bigger army. He just has a more cost-effective army with those Ravager shots and the Mutas. Yeah, and the Mutas. Yeah, I'm going to say that I was wrong. You know, like, seeing the Mutas uh, might have been the thing that did push back Gamja. And if it wasn't for them, then we would have had, like, either a trade. And I think that Warren would have been behind because he would have lost a fourth. So I'm going to actually take what I said back and say, you know what? This is actually a really cool play out of Warren. And uh, even though we used that much gas on it, it really kind of saved him here, and uh, as long as he can follow up on it, I would say. Yeah, well, we do have a nice upgrade lead still going for Warren with the 1-1 one, one upgrades uh, and plus two missile attacks starting. Um, now, there is, of course, for Gamja, plus two missile attacks, which I think is preferred, but, you know, very soon he's going to have a nice upgrade lead with plus two missile attacks and the Carapace upgrade, but here yep. we go, big engagement, massive concave for Warren. Oh, what a sick concave, and then he has, has way too much here. Gamja is going to be getting uh, surrounded almost here. He's behind this hatchery trying to at least hold on to it. And it is going to be plus one, plus one to the plus two, plus zero, which is usually better, plus two, um, mm -hmm. rather than one, one. But I don't think he has the numbers for it. He's getting pushed into a corner, but he does have defender's advantage, so he might be able to do something yeah. here. Reinforcements are going to be coming back in and helping out quite a bit. And I also want to note that the Mutalus got taken out by a lot of those Queens, as well as even a couple of those Ravager shots. So Gamja finds a way to hold on. And I do also want to say that 
Warren really hasn't had an opportunity to saturate up that fourth expansion. He's gotten from uh, gas from the gas guys, which is still a really big deal, especially if he decides to make a couple more of those mutals or do any sort of teching up, but mm -hmm. uh, really doesn't have that mineral income from that expansion just yet. Yeah, this is true, right? And it's like, what does he want to do with it? Is he going to continue to just mm -hmm. get the base uh, so that he can transition into lurkers, or will he just make more ravages, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it looks like Gamja wants to go into Lurkers, but Warren is sticking mm -hmm. on Roach Ravager for the most part. He invested the 200 gas into the Spire. Hasn't really done anything else after with it, but... Oh. Yeah. Gamja... Oh, whoa. Gamja put himself oh, oh, in a oh, very oh, strange oh, position. Snap. The rocks are potential. Oh, that been so oh. Sick. oh that he misses so a couple sick. shots on it. Oh, he yeah. could have cut this army in half, but... He's still going to get a great concave on this army. This is what I think he really needed. He had committed into, you know, getting this kind of damage done with a larger army and finally does manage to make the big trade. He is going to make the trade here and Gamja is just losing a little bit too much. He's going to get pushed all the way back to his fourth base and the, <laughs> the Lurker Den is not even done yet. So those Hydras are going to come on out, wait patiently, being like, yo man, why can't I do that thing yet? Like those roaches are doing. And uh, he won't be able to. He's going to have to wait. But luckily for him, Warren was waiting for a bit, but he's coming in, man. He's trying to strike. Yeah, I don't know if I'm just going to have the time to get out any of those lurkers that he so desperately needs right now. His final set of Ravagers are going to be going down very soon as Warren closes in for the jugular. GG gets called. Oh, gee. Oh, Warren. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Orbital Shipyard. Here we are in the ASL Challenger match number two, game number two between this player spawning in the bottom representing Psystorm Gaming. Give it up for Warren. And his opponent spawning up here in the top right hand corner of the map as the blue Zerg player, the Korean himself. Give it up for Gamja. Oh snap. Warren going yeah. for the 14-14. 14, 14. Oh, 14-14, well, and then he did the extractor trick here. So and not only that, but uh, we got Gamja going for the hatch first and continuing to drone up after the hatchery has been thrown down. Is he even gonna go for? Oh god, he's going for the gas guys or two tempo. This is the <laughs> possible opening without just going for like a three hatch before pool. Yep, this is it. And I mean, the map kind of tells you, hey, I feel like I can play this way. And, I should be safe, right? Well, Warren, he's he's, he's thinking something else, Fear Dragon, because uh, <laughs> that speed is on the way. He might even drop a bailing nest here as he, as he gets to 50. He most likely will because he is continuing to mine the gas. And Gamja's not going to oh. know about it. Oh, Gamja's overlord paths. Uh, I really, I'm not a fan of these overlord paths. He's sending both of the overlords in the exact same direction over the center area. And these Zerglings are going to be able to skirt past him. And for, yeah, as you were saying, for quite a while, Gamja is just going to be in the dark. He's going to see this initial, or uh, these two later Zerglings coming out. That might be a reveal. Eh? I mean, yeah, if you see any Zerglings at this point, you're like, oh, snap. Because uh, the two of Gamja are just now coming out. So you would know that it's not going to be a hatch first, but it still could be like a, you know, a pool into hatch. Mm -hmm. But when you see more and more Zerglings coming, then that's when you're like, okay, well. Oh, yeah, two of these Zergans are already getting very low on health right now, and I think even an opportunity for Warren to get a good surround on this spine collar or a decent surround on it, and he should be able to, but he's not opting to go for it. He's going for these Zergans, going for these drones. Yeah, he's trying to, you know, cut down the drone count, but he, I don't even think he got... He did get one, but mm -hmm. um, since he didn't go for the spine crawler, that means that he's going to try to bust it with Bailings. I believe you need five, kind of like you do need for, uh, for the buildings mm -hmm. of a Terran. Ooh, oh, okay, that's not how you want to use your feelings if you're playing the bus and spine crawler. Uh, the uh -oh. queen's also going to make it very difficult for just a small number of zergans to do a whole lot over here. Suddenly, this isn't going quite so well for Warren. Now, he does have some more reinforcing zergans coming out, and Gamja is actually droning up behind all of this. And I he's think like, after now seeing those... Yeah, he's going to see those zergans moving across the map and suddenly be like, Oh, wait, did I drone up a little bit too soon? Yeah, well, he did make the third queen, and he also got a spine mm -hmm. crawler, so he can use the queens yeah. for some city. But, uh-oh, he's going to try to get them out of position. Getting another drone is great, but I don't think he can kill the queens. Well, he's going to go for it, it seems, and the oh. Bailey's uh, 
Not gonna accomplish a whole lot. Maybe they're just gonna go after the queens. I don't know. Try and get splash damage on all of them. It doesn't quite work out. Doesn't kill any of them. Nope, and there are transfuses ready on the queens too, so it's like throwing away a lot of these lings here and not getting too much done means that Gamza is gonna have the hatchery up. And he's also already got his uh bailing nest up. And I think his speed finish as well, so I'm just gonna be like, yeah, I feel pretty good about life right now. Well, Warren is uh <laughs> down by seven drones in a hatchery. Yeah, I mean, Gamja's going to have Banelings, he's going to have more drones, he's going to have that hatchery up much faster, and Warren is starting to try and sneak in some drones here and there, but, I mean, with three queens, you can easily hold this ramp if uh, Oh, Gamja's so easy. And he gets yeah. his natural protected, too, so it's not even like Gam or uh, Warren can do some crazy all-in where he tries to go for the natural, on like, on, like, Laralac or something. Nah, mm -hmm. man, this is going to be Orbital Shipyard, and... Yep. He might even get on the offensive himself, because he does have- Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gotta be careful about that. Yeah, man. Those are what I call, like, the unburrowed landmines in ZVZ, mm -hmm. where you just- you leave a bailing at some random location, and your mm -hmm. opponent's just like, okay, I'm gonna send my Zergans across the map, I'll send them over to here, this is like a safe area to send them, then you go back to, like, macroing. But you don't realize you're actually running your Zerglings straight into a band. It's <laughs> randomly placed on the map. Well, yeah, I mean, you're not really expecting it, right? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll exactly. Look at my, I'll look at my Zerglings when I get there, but... Yeah, exactly. look back and it's like, yo, my Zerglings never <laughs> got happened? there. What, what happened? <laughs> yeah, what, where'd they go? Yo, too many times that has happened, but... uh, <laughs> I try to set those traps up nowadays, too. But then, like, when I deliberately do them, they, no, they never move out. And then I just spend so much time spending, like, looking at there that... I forget to do everything else. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, uh, Gamja is taking his own uh, third expansion that's going to be finished up relatively shortly. And it's it just looks like a situation where I can... Whatever things that Warren looks even in, I can point to another thing that Gamja looks ahead in right now. And it's a True. bit troublesome. Oh, yeah. Warren is trying, you know, at least to... Trying to catch up. It's a very, very hard game of catch up that he's playing, and he's getting his lair up at least at a very even time as Gamja. But mm -hmm. Gamja has the third base up. Um, it's not even like it's going down now, it's already up and starting to mine. So, Ooh. oh, yeah, Ooh. well, you could trade two for three right here, I think. Uh, well, one of those bailings is probably just a little bit out of range, but. With some good micro, he can eventually deal with these banlings. Got to be a bit careful over here, though. Queen going to help out quite a bit with the DPS, but ends up losing a decent number of drones. You have to remember, he's already a bit low on that drone count. Cannot really afford to lose any. Yeah, losing any drone here is such a big deal. Like, he gets a good scout to Gamja. Like, the scouting baneling goes into the back and sees the spire going up. So Warren is like, ah, my, my kind of... <laughs> that was my last final trick up my sleeve. And Gamja's like, okay, he got his third base up, going for Roaches, and he might even make an attack before Roach Speed is done. Or he can sit back on the third, drone up, get up to a really nice economic lead, and maybe put down like a Hydroden or uh, Infestation Pit and a lot of Queens. Mm -hmm. So he, he has many options here because he was ahead mm -hmm. and uh, he knows what's up that uh, Warren is up to. Yeah, these mutals are not going to be nearly as effective as they were in the last game, or at least I'm not anticipating that they will be. The roaches already making their way across the map along with these uh, zerglings. And oh, Gamja turning back around. I'm curious what he saw that made him decide to turn around. Maybe he's just a little bit concerned about the mutals popping out relatively soon, so he wants to make sure that he doesn't just take any substantial losses like he did in that last game and allow mm -hmm. Warren back in the game. Yeah, I think he's, he thought in his head, and he was like, alright, it's time to go kill this guy, but then he was like, you know, it is Orbital Shipyard, and it takes forever for Roaches to get across the map, so <laughs> if you do that, you can go ahead and, like, try to get some damage done, and oh it's usually good to trade them. Ooh. He's building eight spore crawlers. Tempo, this Yo, is... Yo, he's not playing around. Yo, Gamza does not want to die to Mutas. This is a, a bit crazy. <gasps> Yo, this is, like, a really cool play, though. Gamza mm. is gonna go ahead and put down a Spire of his own. Just defend against run buys, and he already has the gas mining. So you know how they oh, usually yeah. will say, "Never go mutas," um, you know, behind somebody who went mutas. Like you don't want to ever go it, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. In this case, he's <laughs> so far ahead that his gas mining is like, look at his gas bank right now. 
Yeah. yeah, he already has enough gas to make more Mutilus than Warren currently has, which yep. uh, does spill a bit of Doom and Disaster. And not only that, but Warren is throwing down his own Roach Warren, droning up and trying to go into the Roach play right now. So not <laughs> only not only is he going to be losing that Mutilus battle, but after that, he's not going to have anything to deal with the Mutilus for himself. No, it's going <laughs> to be very similar to what we saw in Dust Towers, but like... It's such a mind game and like the kind of things you can do here when you're ahead is you can go for roaches and drop down the infestation and hydra and go for you know the the great ground army but you can do plays like this and these are a little bit more volatile in legacy of the void right like you go for mutas yourself the best thing you can do right now is to catch gums or to catch warren off guard 20 19 mutas oh my 21 gonna go up to 21 but yeah it's more volatile four times as many <laughs> only four times as many as Warren has. <laughs> yeah. He needs to catch Warren off guard and like before he gets war crawlers or anything up. And uh -huh. then he should be really nice because if Warren defends against it pretty easily and he's able to turtle up and like not take too much damage from it, then we got this, you know, situation where you can go up to Hive and get the Vipers out and uh, you know, the, the big flock of mutas isn't like the end of the <laughs> all anymore. It's not, you know, so. Yeah, a parasitic bomb, man. It will oh, murder Mutilus dead. <laughs> I think Warren, the moment of realization is, is, is now. He's like, oh, oh I've... snap, no. Yeah, now's, now's the moment where I want to see Warren dropping down the eight spore crawlers. Well, five of them going down, that's not too bad. <laughs> but uh, I don't think they're gonna come up in time. See, like, yeah. <laughs> that is a really nice, kind of play, I was gonna, I don't know, like... Is, uh, is it season six? Or seven? Uh, yes, season six. Technically, yeah, yeah, season six, baby, baby, we're here for 2016, and our first player that we're gonna be introducing, he is green, well, he is Zerg, he is Gamja. And his opponent spawning down here or up here in the top left hand corner of the map as the red Zerg player won game number one, but needs to close it out. Give it up for Cystrom Gaming's Warren. Neither so, of them going for anything like that I thought they super would. Super crazy. Yeah, yeah, this is this is like a good map to go for one of those early pools, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It definitely is, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe the fact that it is a four-player map, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like a lot of the times you will see some crazy stuff. You know, 13-12s are very popular, and then like certain other builds that are like meant to deal with that aggression. Sometimes it is, but uh, Warren, he's yeah. gonna... I think well, he's the one it's... that opened up a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, it's it's always not it's also not super too late to put on some kind of later speedling aggression. I think right, speedling banling mm -hmm. aggression, uh, because it takes such a long time to get that wall in. And the other big thing about the defense that makes it hard to defend your natural and your main base is that because they're so far away, your creep spread really won't be between uh, be there between the bases. So your queens can't easily mm -hmm. move between the bases. You can't, for example, build a spine crawler if you're up against some sort of big all in in one base and have it also transition to the other one if it needs to. It's, it's no, just a lot you of, can't. Yeah, a lot of like, transitionary problems. It's too easy to go in between the main and the natural with lings, and then early defense is usually up to the queens and like static mm -hmm. defense, so it's like, eh, doesn't really happen. So, well, I mean... Zerglin's heading across the map right now. Both the players getting up their baneliness and Everything looking like it's going to be setting itself up for a nice, good old uh, macro game, and even a sport. Or sorry, a spine crawler coming down from Gamja, so really playing extra defensive. Super safe, yeah, and uh, I do like it because uh, I haven't really seen too many games on this map. Uh, period. So it is nice to see that they are going to try that, and mm -hmm. even though it, it gets to, uh, to this stage, it can go to a macro game. But sometimes, like you get that one round of drones, and then all of a sudden it's <laughs> all links from there on out. But I actually think that, yeah, look, we are going to see a lair coming out of Warren. Ooh. And he may just be going for that Mutilus play once mm -hmm. again. We'll see when he decides to take those gas geysers, but he is going to get into the main base of Gamja and scout out 
pretty much everything you kind of will, could be able to see right now, which I guess is mainly just that they're still mining. He's still mining gas, and that there isn't a roach worm thrown down yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Gamja got in there and he saw the lair too, so he's like, okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't mm. see additional gases, but he's uh, he can make some kind of assumptions. Uh, but the Roach Warren and the Evil Chamber will go down for Warren. And for Gamja, he might just take an early... Th yeah, if you don't take an early lair, you usually are just going to try to get ahead by getting an early third. Or you're going to go for like a crazy all-in with a bunch of Lings and Banes. So, Gamja taking that third base. Yeah, well, we got a couple of units making their way across the map over here for Gamja. I believe he's, yeah, he's still just going ham on that unit production right now. So Warren's going to come up with some sort of defense to make sure that he can still secure the third expansion, especially with the Banelings now posing as a bit of a threat. But whoa, Warren, maybe looking to just try and bring back Gamja's units uh, by attacking his third expansion. Oh, yeah. He might not have enough here, though. So really good by Gamja. Mm -hmm. Going to get the cancel on the third base here for Warren. And now Warren is trying to go Roaches, and is going to be behind on a base. While Gamja, did he actually put down a Roach Warren, or he's only going for Carapace, man. And Whoa. he's still not going for Lair. Yeah, a bailing hit goes off inside of Warren's natural expansion mineral line, and some great Whoa. target fire coming out from Gamja. He just has such an overwhelming number of Zerglings, and even though the Roaches are starting to pop out right now for Warren, he's already taken seven drone losses, and... Uh, Dang hasn't really been able to make a whole lot of use so far of this lair tag. The Galila reconstitution isn't going up, but, I mean, it's not going to pay off right now. Uh-uh, no. Look at them going back and forth. Lings are so mobile, getting a lot of these drone kills, and Gamja even knows that a lot of the roaches are coming out, so he's just like, okay, I should be ahead in drones. I have the third base up. Don't need to get too greedy, and mm -hmm. I should be able to at least have a nice solid position in, the, in this game uh, going into roaches. He just needs to wait yeah. for it to actually finish. I think that's his only problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if Warren is going to go for a bit of counter aggression, trying to take advantage of the fact that, okay, I went for this earlier lair, I went for the earlier Roach Warren, uh, Roach Speed. I need to take advantage of this small period of time where I have these upgrades and my opponent doesn't. But unfortunately, when he gets to the other side of the map, he may very well just end up being outnumbered. Yeah, I don't even know if Defender's Advantage is going to help him here. He's trying to use run bias to try to uh, bring back Warren. Warren already has the road speed, and he's also morphing... <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Morphing in a few Ravages with it, too, so... Mm. He's going to be able to do that cool little dance of death. And huh. this third base might be in a little bit of trouble. Well, a Gamja lot of still it. does have... Yes, Gamja still does have a uh, larger number of Roaches out on the map right now, so... That Defender's Advantage is going to come in handy as well. There is one or two Ravagers with this army, but uh, Gamja immediately ends up losing one of his Ravagers and is going to have a lot of difficulty defending this. Yeah, the Micro Potential coming out of Warren is a little too strong. He has the Road Speed and the Creep benefits both of them, of course, because uh, that's just mm -hmm. how the game works. But yeah, Gamja is trying to real like he's like, I want to save the third, but I can't. <laughs> he can't retreat. He can't uh, use his Spine Crawlers. Uh, they're not there yet. So, oh, that oh, double even overlord get... snipe! Beautiful placement on those corrosive bile shots, and that's gonna supply block Gamja for quite a bit of time. Gamja really on the back foot. When you have to make three spine callers in hopes of just trying to defend against his aggression, you know you're in a lot of trouble. But Warren is not seizing the aggression just yet. No, he's not. He doesn't want to attack into the spine crawler, and uh, he's in that situation where he's like ahead and getting more ahead because he did take out the third base. Road speed is gonna finish it for Gamja, so he's gonna maybe try to do something. But Warren still has the, or rather, the army lead. So as long as he doesn't engage on the spine crawlers, and there's no real advantage here for Gamja, but this is a good adva <laughs> advantage. Uh, defender's advantage as well as the spines, but they're already down from the corrosive vials. Warren don't give a damn. He's just gonna move on in, man. Yeah, those Ravagers just attack so fast in addition to their Corrosive Vials. So even when those Corrosive Vials don't land, they just have such a ridiculous amount of DPS and they've been staying in the back behind the Roach tank and we end up seeing the overpowering GG Warren gonna meet his teammate in the winner's match and uh, <laughs> that would be Peely Peely.